What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing a quick comparison video between the Tier 1 Axis Slim and the Tier 1 Aegis. Let's check them out. All right, so the two targets I'm going to be using today, we got the TA targets. This is their full-size ADAP uh, 550 steel with hostage swinger. So you got a big target, little target. And then over here, we got the two-thirds uh, ADAP. Great little small target, also 550, also pistol and rifle rated. Okay, so let me preface it this video real quick by letting you know that a appendix holster with a spare magazine is never going to be the most comfortable thing you wore. You're not going to hear me say it's amazing, it's like it's floating on your body because they're just not. I mean, you have a full size gun, you have a spare magazine, you have a huge piece of Kydex, plastic, whatever you want to call it, in front of you. Um, it's just not going to be the most comfortable thing you wore, but you're going to be looking for the most comfortable of the appendix holsters. And for me, that was the tier one line of holsters. It's my fifth holster I've had. Um, in my appendix journey and it's definitely the most comfortable one that I've come across as well as the most versatile So here we go. All right guys. So real quick. Let's talk about what I like in an appendix holster This is the tier 1 axis slim This is the holster that I've ended up on on my journey through the appendix holster life uh, This is the fifth one I've used I started out with a real cheap kydex holster that was not good single clip And then I've moved through a couple other companies which I'm not going to touch on in this video But we will later this is where I ended up. So the things that I like, I like that it can bend. This is big because you always have a claw on these style holsters and it's pushing that gun into your body. But what tends to happen when you don't have the bend is that it pushes that magazine out. So your magazine prints even though your gun does not. There is still enough rigidity here that the holster stays in place. These can't move apart. It just gives you that little bit of bend to cover your body, which is awesome. I also like to have pretty light retention. I basically have it so where my gun can fall out with a simple shake. I do this because you are adding retention with your belt and your waistline when you're putting it in your holster and tightening it down. So I don't want the gun tight in the holster and then even tighter when I put my belt on. I like to have a good consistent draw and not have to yank it out. I want it to just kind of glide out, but it will not fall out walking, running, any of those things. Trust me. I've worn these for a couple years, never had a problem. Of course, you want a claw to push that gun back in. I like to have a spare mag for a couple reasons. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's excessive, you don't need that many rounds. You're right, maybe, but it's nice to have. Also, I like to have a wide holster because that gives me two clips spread out on your waistline. That's nice because it allows that gun to stay in the same exact place. With a single clip, you tend to get a tilt. With dual clips, this gun doesn't change where it's sitting on your waistline, and that gives you a consistent purchase point. The gun's not in different spots. And, speaking of purchase point, I like the gun to sit up on my belt line. So my belt's gonna run right through here. I'm gonna have all that space here to get to my gun without having to dig into my pant line. It's just scoop and go. And real quick, just to touch on sweat guards, I order my holsters with no sweat guard. This one I got second hand. Um, it has a mid sweat guard. They also make a high sweat guard. I don't like sweat guards because one I'm not worried about sweat on my gun just clean it and then for me I don't have belly hair So I'm not worried about getting pinched in there And then also when you have your gun out and if you have a higher mid and you're bending around shooting This tends to stab you in the gut So I like to just eliminate it But if you're newer to it if you're concerned about reholstering this does give you kind of a touch point to bring your gun down in so it's kind of personal preference. I would never order a high guard. I would go mid guard, no guard. Let's just talk about lights on a holster. Most concealed carry situations happen in low light or no light. I think it's about 80%. And it's nice to have a light on your holster. But also a big thing that most people don't think about is when you don't have a light, your holster is about yay long, okay? And when you have the gun in the magazine, that weight tends to want to tip forward. So I like to have the light on mine because it gives me more kydex down in my pants. It kind of evens out that holster's touch point. Instead of having all the gun and stuff kind of lean out, 
So my holsters conceal better having a light on them and this doesn't add to the uncomfortableness in your pants. All right, so quick, let's talk about the Tier 1 Aegis. This is the first holster that I started wearing from the Tier 1 concealment line. It's a great holster. Leather band here in the middle with snaps, so the holster does bend, but there is enough rigidity that it keeps the holster in the same place for a consistent draw. Um, these do unsnap, obviously, so you can have your mag caddy pulled separately. If you just want to carry this holster, you still have a clip in the claw, so it works well for an independent holster as well as a uh, dual holster mag carrier. You do have the claw. One thing I like about the tier one line, they make a 90 degree claw instead of a 45. So this really pushes that holster back. But the, the big thing with tier one is because this gets pushed back, allowing this bend here allows this magazine to still come back into your body. Whereas if this is a solid piece of Kydex, this drives the gun back into your body as well as pushing this magazine forward. So then you tend to print here even though this is concealed. So with that bend on the Aegis and Axis line, it allows it to both be driven back into your body. And you're going to see on the Axis a couple more features that make it drive back into your body even more. Alright guys, let's talk about the Tier 1 Axis Slim. So the Slim is just a little bit tighter through here. Um, the big things to point out with this holster that I love is that one, this clip is actually in the Kydex. So that eliminates the need to have extra Kydex down here. Big thing for me. Another thing, look at the Kydex bends through here. This actually bends specifically to my Glock 19. Instead of it just being an open place to put your gun, it's actually curved to the specific gun. I like that a lot. The big thing that they did here now is they added this kydex bump right here that pushes this clip out a little bit and when this gun is pushed into your body from the claw this is actually pushed into your body from that bump as well so it allows you to conceal the gun and the magazine all right so real quick let's compare the two the big difference with the axis slim is it's about an inch i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this it's about an inch less kydex so you save a little space in your belt line. I like that a lot. Um, on the back, you'll notice the magazine cants are a little bit different. Oh, let's see if I can line them up. There you go. So the one is a little bit more angled like we talked about. Um, I like the cant of this magazine. It's a little bit more conducive to a better, more natural reload. And then the thing that I really like that they did here, you have four snaps, a little bit excess Kydex, where with the Slim, there's no snaps, they've cut down that kydex, and this, you know, when you have a holster, these are the points that tend to touch your legs, um, so the less they have there, the better. I like that a lot about it. Obviously, you have the shot cord here, you have the snaps here, this can come apart, this cannot come apart, unless you take the cord out, which you're not going to do that, obviously. Um, and another thing I like here is they use three screws along this line, where here they use two. Anyone that's worn an appendix holster for a while knows that when this claw is getting pushed in, this is where your basically like pressure point is on your holster. And this tends, if, it, if the holster breaks, this is where it kind of tends to break because of all that tension that the claw is putting on it. So they kind of reinforced it with the axis. I like that. Obviously, I've used these kind of holsters for several years. I've never had one break on me, but I know that that is one thing that can happen. All right, so we're gonna be shooting the Aegis right now, real quick. Both holsters are $129 from Tier 1 Concealed. If you add a light, it's $20. If you upgrade to a, a fancier Kydex, it's an additional 10. And like I was touching the base on the Axis, if you wanna get more of that shock cord, I think it's $395, um, so that's easy to replace too. So let's take some reps from the Aegis here and then we'll switch over to the Axis. You know, a big thing for me, like when I started with the appendix holsters was I didn't know what comfortable and not comfortable was. So the first one I had and I started wearing it, it was like, I don't understand how people can even appendix carry. It was so uncomfortable. Um, it was so low in my pant line. The purchase area was hard, it dug into my groin and legs. And then as you realize, if you spend a little bit more money, get a little bit better quality, uh, they come, come a long way. So it's, it's one of those things you don't really want to cut corners on get a quality holster from a quality company. Obviously I like tier one, but there's a lot of good companies out there that make them. All right, so a brief overview of what we just talked about. 
great holsters. They work very well. I think the bend in the middle and the Kydex works is what sets them apart from other holster styles like that. Personally for me, that bend is why I switched to the tier one line. Because instead of having a push point on that claw and having that mag come forward, that bend allows both things to fold into your body. So it's important to me now to have those things. Conceals better because of the Kydex works and eliminating that waste that it, it, it's not uncomfortable below your uh, waistline, so it's not gouging into your legs and your groin area, so it's comfortable for sitting, standing, things like that. Now, to follow up, of course, it's an appendix holster, piece of Kydex in the front of you. It's not gonna be the most comfortable thing, especially when you first start wearing it. Uh, I think Barrett compared it to wearing a watch or when you put on a hat, you know, you notice it, you feel it. Um, you feel it on your wrist, your head, but then after 10 minutes, you don't even think about it. It's that same thing. So you're going to feel it when you're crouching down to tie your shoes, picking up things, picking up your kids. You're definitely going to know it's there, but it allows you to have, let's see what, I have 33 rounds. I have a consistent purchase area. I have a consistent holster placement. doesn't move around on my belt and doesn't stab me. So it's just, they're a great holster line, $129 for each style. Um, for me, I like the Axis because I would never break it apart and it's a little bit more compact, so it works for me. Hey guys, so if you liked the video, please hit like, please click subscribe. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos like this. I'd like to eventually compare the Tier 1 to the Sidecar, Tier 1 to the QVO Wingman, um, and just give my give and take on those things as well. I uh, appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you hopefully in a couple days.